Hello, everybody. In this presentation, we will discuss how we achieve significant cost reduction for Google data centers through power over subscription. I am Varun Sakalkar, leading the Google power efficiency efforts. And with me today is Vasilios Kondorinis. I am the technical lead of the oversubscription team in data center software. This is a joint work with many Google contributors. With Cloud's hyperscale growth, we are spending hundreds of billions of dollars globally on building data centers. These trends motivate increased emphasis on efforts to improve the cost efficiency of building data centers, either by reducing cost of construction or by using built-out capacity more effectively. One such effort focused on increasing capacity utilization is power over subscription. What is oversubscription? This is an optimization that takes advantage of the fact that power utilization, when measured across a statistically large collection of machines, is low, leaving capacity standard. We can oversell this capacity, similar to how the airline industry oversells its tickets. This essentially allows us to create new data center capacity for free thus providing a very effective way to reduce costs. This helps improve the value proposition of data centers, which is commonly measured in dollars spent to build a data center per watt of machine power it can support. In this paper, we discuss our new contributions, which achieve dramatic generational oversubscription improvements to the tune of 25% or more, saving hundreds of millions of dollars for Google. Our paper identifies two key insights to propose a novel design. Specifically, leveraging data at scale from Google, we show that larger power sharing domains enable more power over subscription. And we can utilize the fact that not all workloads are of equal importance. Because if we have low priority tasks, which can tolerate more disruption within their SLOs, we can shed them opportunistically and also achieve higher power or subscription. We take advantage of these insights by employing a new electrical topology based on medium voltage and SLO aware power capping solution. The last contribution this paper makes is how we approach deployment of these technologies at scale at Google to achieve the dramatic oversubscription increase and the cost reduction improvement. This is an outline of our talk. We'll present an overview of the few known concepts important to understanding the overall proposal. Then we will talk about the new electrical topology, which we refer to as the medium voltage power plane. We will also introduce the new software power architecture, which is SLO aware. And finally, we will showcase a few results from deploying the new architecture at scale at Google's fleet and the conclusions from it. Let's start with a brief background of the conventional power dis distribution systems in data centers. These architectures, which are also referred to as radial architectures, take power from utility and step it down from medium to low voltage, finally to a PDU. This PDU supports rows of machines and is typically two to three megawatts in size. A schematic of such a topology is shown on the right. We will compare the impact of the domain size on the PDU utilization in our results section and also compare it to the outputs from our new proposed architecture. Next, we will discuss a logical mapping of a scheduling domain over the physical machine deployments. This scheduling domain or a cluster typically spans few PDUs as we saw on the previous slide. The scheduler here is a master controller which manages workloads on individual machines using a local node controller. This mapping is important to understand, as we will see in a few slides how we can use this logical 
master node controller to manage power utilization power utilization behaviors another important thing to note is that the nodes have a mix of production tier which is typically high availability and latency sensitive workloads and non production tier which have more relaxed availability and performance requirements co scheduled on the same node now let's briefly introduce the concept of over subscription and existing power management efforts which we call power capping at a high level the power over subscription potential in a data center is determined by maximum power expected at a choke point this choke point is the first power limit to hit as the load increases so consider a circuit breaker trip rating as an example typically the larger the power capacity of the choke point the more statistical multiplexing that can occur downstream of it from different workloads more statistical multiplexing also means reduction in the peak power at the choke point thus a larger over subscription potential for example the pdos from the previous slides have a choke point defined by the generator size attached to them and they are at the scale of 2 to 3 megawatts and so fairly limited in size we protect this choke point against spurious power peaks using an actuator called power capping this actuator monitors the actual power at the choke point and sheds loads by killing or throttling the workloads if it reaches close to that limit with that overview we want to expose two key insights which our team has identified through this paper number 1 over subscription can be increased by increasing the domain size to a whole scheduling domain compared to typical pdus of the past and two we can utilize the slack from non production jobs to manage the variability in power utilization and in turn increase over subscription to leverage these insights we want to present two innovations as core contributions of this paper a which is about developing a medium voltage based power plane architecture that scales the statistical multiplexing domain to tens of megawatts of capacity and thus can support multiple scheduling domains or clusters on it and number 2 is a new slo and priority aware power capping software architecture this maximizes over, over subscription without impacting availability for highly available production workloads in the next few slides we will deep dive on these new contributions so let's start with the new electrical topology we refer to this new topology as medium voltage power plane the power plane can multiplex tens of megawatts of machines and then over subscribe that corpus we achieve that by pushing the choke point to the plane the choke point is defined by a farm of generators and thus we had to innovate industrial control schemes to parallel the gen farm reliably and still deliver the power within few seconds of a start signal another key innovation was reducing the amount of time the gen farm choke point is actually active through the life cycle of the data center to illustrate the importance of managing the active state of the choke point let's look at the normal operation of this architecture in this case given the two end topology the load is split evenly between the two utilities when one of the utilities becomes unavailable the other utility line automatically picks up the load as each individual utility is oversized compared to the generator farm there is still no observed capping this capping can only occur in the event of a dual utility outage this is the only case where the generator farm choke point is active while on generator we also monitor available generators and dynamically adjust capping thresholds to also account for generator failures this ability to 
manage the active state of the choke point is instrumental in enabling higher OSRs compared to conventional PDU based architectures. And we'll show the impact of these, this feature in the coming slides. I will now hand over to Vasilios, who will walk through our software innovations and also walk through some of our key results. Thank you, Varun. So the architecture of our power capping solution puts an emphasis on simplicity, speed of response, and robustness. The power capping service is comprised of three modules. The meter watcher module pulls meter devices at the choke point of the architecture every second. The power notifier module compares the measurements with the applicable capping threshold depending on the active power path in the system. When measured power is higher than the capping threshold, the machine manager module signals individual machine controllers with remote procedure calls to set low priority load with a SIG stop or SIG kill signal. The overall end-to-end -end response of our system is on average less than two seconds. And most of the time uh, spent is spent waiting for the meter to update its network card with a new power measurement. Robustness is of, is of paramount importance here. Therefore, power capping service reads from redundant meters, has master elected replicas, and is partitioned into shards. Now that we have presented the load shedding mechanism, let's see how we deploy this at, scale, at Google scale. In order to ensure we monitor and track power utilization and respective OSR, we have built a continuous, continuously running pipeline. This pipeline estimates the worst case deployed peak power by combining deployed machines with their estimated peak power and adding miscellaneous power loads in the data center. These peak power estimates are combined with total measured power at the choke point and estimated production power at the choke point to calculate total and production power utilization respectively. Eventually, all the utilization info becomes accessible through queries and dashboards. Once the utilization curves are known, we estimate capping probabilities for different OSRs. So far, this pipeline works for both the traditional architecture as well as the new medium voltage-based architecture. For the medium voltage-based architecture, we add an additional step to combine capping probabilities with probability to have a dual utility failure and generator failures. This provides a more realistic probability of capping that can be compared with capping frequency SLOs to determine total and production OSR. Next, we explain how our contributions affect the OSR potential. Increasing the power domain size makes power utilization cumulative, cumulative distribution curves sharper. Essentially, it reduces the observed power utilization at the tail. Moving the choke point from the PDU to the cluster level reduces the max power utilization by 10%, as you can see on the figure on the left. At lower percentiles, the delta is smaller. Larger power domains also make it possible to place multiple scheduling domains in the same power domain. Going from one to two scheduling domains reduces the higher, the higher percentile utilization by three to 5% as shown in the figure on the right. With these insights, we use cluster level power utilization in our existing fleet to project expected power utilization in the medium voltage power plane architecture. As discussed earlier, in this architecture, when we have both utilities available, or even when one utility is unavailable, we expect to never cap. On the left, you see the expected portion of time capping in the event of a dual utility outage while we are on generators. The box plot represents uh, expected capping for a significant set of Google clusters as we increase our subscription rate. Each X corresponds to an outlier cluster. And at 25% OSR, we see that the majority of clusters experience very little time capping. Although from the perspective of capping non-production loads, we would be able to further increase our subscription, we limit ourselves to 25%. This is because the highest production power we observe across our cluster, clusters peaks at 80%, which corresponds to 25% OSR, as shown on the figure on the right. To summarize, this architecture enables negligible disruption for non-production loads and no impact to production jobs. At the same time, 
offers a significant opportunity to further increase OSR by customizing it on a per cluster, cluster basis. Next, we show data from two production data center deployments to illustrate the benefits of aggregating a larger part of domains with multiple scheduling domains. On the left, the medium voltage power plane one has a single cluster running higher power workloads, while the medium voltage power plane two has two clusters with lower power workloads. The production power in these deployments peaks at 65 and 59% utilization respectively over the, horizon, the, the time horizon we studied, um, allowing up to 54% and 69% OSR. This highlights the dramatic opportunity for our subscription if we tailor OSR to specific clusters. Finally, on the right, we present the power reduction during an artificially created power capping event. We reduce power by 1.7 megawatts in less than four seconds. At this scale, this is really fast. I should mention here that we're working to make a subset of our power utilization traces publicly available. We will post the traces in the link shown here. In this work, we describe Google's medium voltage electrical architecture co-developed with an SLO-aware power capping solution. There has been significant prior work, both in industry and academia in this important area. In contrast to existing studies, our solution focuses on a single choke point level of power hierarchy, thus it's less complex, and it's platform agnostic since our implementation sets load only using operating system level signals instead of platform level power knobs. Multi-level power control systems or using energy stored in batteries to write peaks or managing resources at the data center level are all orthogonal to our current approach. To sum up, power over subscription is a very important technique to lower data center costs. We identified two key insights, large power domains and workload awareness within SLOs enables more of a subscription. Then we proposed a new electrical architecture for data centers and a new software architecture for power capping. These contributions enable dramatic improvements in over subscription, significant cost reductions, while focus on reliability and abide to customer SLOs. More opportunities to further increase our subscription are possible in the future. Thank you. Thank you.